We're going to welcome the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the song we sang? Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who is and is to come. Come on, man. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Let's get ready.
Lord, for the Lord delight in showing mercy. For the Lord delight in showing mercy. For the Lord delight in showing mercy. Come on. Here we go, church. Come on. Move your bodies tonight. Go when I move. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I hold my mouth, when the darkness speaks, when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I hold my mouth, when the darkness speaks, when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I hold my mouth, then the darkness speaks, when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I hold my mouth. Darkness flees when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. Come on, move your body. Praise the Lord, come on. our bodies tonight. You know why? Because the church has sat still way too long. I'm not afraid to say it. We've been stagnant. We need to shake it off and we need to move because God's on the move. So he wants to move through us tonight. Amen? So let's get out of our seats. Let's move our bodies tonight and let's be like Jesus. Amen? Let's be free. Let's be powerful. Let's be bold as a lion. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Gotta move my body, move my body. I can't contain it. Oh, I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Gotta move my body, move my body. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Gotta move my body, move my body. Can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Gotta move my body, move my body. Can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Gotta move my body, move my body. Can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Gotta move my body, move my body. Can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Gotta move my body, move my body. Yeah. Gotta move my body, move my body. Yeah. Gotta move my body, move my body. Yeah. Gotta move my body. I'm gonna roar like a lion. Yeah. Gotta roar like a lion. Yeah. I've gotta roar like a lion. Yeah. Gotta roar like a lion. I can't contain it, can't contain it. I gotta roar like a lion. I've gotta roar like a lion. Yeah. I've gotta roar like a lion. Yeah. Oh, see, I can't contain it, can't contain it. Move my body, move my body. Move my body, move my body. Gotta move my body, move my body. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. We come alive in the glory. We come alive in your glory, Lord. We come alive in your glory, Lord. We can't contain it, can't contain it. Your glory, Lord, in your glory, we come Lord. alive in your glory, we Lord. Come alive in your glory, we come Lord. alive in your glory, we Lord. Because we can't contain it, can't contain it. Come on, come on, let's jump, 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 jump.
jump, 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 jump. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. Oh, when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I move my mouth. When the darkness flees, when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. Hallelujah. Man, sometimes the Lord takes over right from the beginning. We start a song, it's like a match. You start the match and it just... But God's already here. He's already here. You just got to step into it. You got to move your body. Move your feet. I always hear Pastor Eric, he's, he always looks at me and says, don't forget to invite them up. So, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. I'm really, all I'm, all I'm singing tonight is the truth. All I'm singing is I'm being real. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. And we're not supposed to, right? Man. I can't contain it. 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 Yeah. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move. I can't contain it tonight. I can't contain it tonight. Amen. Amen. I was so glad when they said, let us come to the house of the Lord. This is what heaven looks like right here. This is what freedom looks like. This is what the kingdom of God looks like. Freedom in the house tonight. Amen. And it's not about anybody here. It's all about him and him alone. I dance for him. I sing for him. I don't perform for myself or for anybody else. So then why don't we be free? If it's for him, why don't we be like David unashamed? And why don't we just stand bold before the Goliath? Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to continue with our, our praise right now. If you could turn the drums up and
guys sing it. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to every time get out of my way. this, amen. I need some radical. I need some radical warriors tonight who don't care what anybody thinks about them. Who want to be a lion tonight and come down and and roar in authority tonight and dance with authority tonight and hail the lion of Judah tonight. Amen. So if that's you Make your way down here and the stage. You can come up on the stage and do some war dance. Come on. Religion's out the door. Amen? Religion's out the door. We're free tonight. We're not playing church. We're not playing patty cake. We need God to move in this hour like never, ever before in the history of history. We, I'm awake. How many are awake in the spirit? We need God. We need God to arise and let his enemies be scattered. So let's let's let that praise, warfare, scream, shout, roar, dance, whatever you've got to do. But this is game time. This is crunch time. This is overtime. We don't, we don't even understand what's going on right now. God is just waiting for this. Come on, let's rise. Let's rise to another level. Let's go for it tonight, amen? Yeah, if that's you, you, you radical. Come, yeah, all you radical people.
understand what's going on. We're fighting in the spirit. We're not playing church. We're, we're, we're warring on behalf of God. For California, for our country, for other nations. There's people that are getting rocked and devastated by earthquakes, tsunamis. Things are happening. But we're on the prayer wall tonight. We're on the prayer wall tonight. We're standing in agreement. Lord, we see you. We're crying out. We're fighting. We're fighting against the evil that's coming. 
We're fighting. We're fighting for our sons and our daughters who are addicted to drugs. We're fighting for the prodigals tonight. Some of you are fighting inside tonight. There's a fight going on. And you just need to dance. And you just need to let out a scream. And you need to just roar and break free. There's breakthrough in this room tonight. Come on up. We're going to go back into this. And those that were on the stage, come, come back up here. And anybody else who has flags. So please, don't be a spectator right now. Don't, 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 look, don't look at us. We're not performing. In your own way, wherever you're at, do a warfare. Even if it's just a little dance, close your eyes. Engage in the spirit right now. Amen? We're pushing back darkness, I'm telling you. Something's happening right now. There's a breakthrough anointing right now. Come on, we're fighting. Come on. Release your war dance. Come on, dance. Release your war dance. Release your war dance. Dance in the vid. You know, if you feel like you need a breakthrough tonight, come down right here and dance on stage. I'll dance. I'll dance with you. I'll hold your hand. I like. I like to. I like to ask pastors. Pastors, if you would come up with me and stand. Come on, pastors. This is probably the the craziest altar call you've ever seen. But it's it's happening. This is what you call a breakthrough altar call, I guess. I don't know. So if that's you, if you need a breakthrough, if you know somebody that needs a breakthrough that you want to, you're fighting for, if you're just fighting for your for this city right here or the city you live in, if your church needs a breakthrough, you're fighting because you have financial issues. Tonight's the night. There's agreement in this room. So if that's you, the altar call is just come forward on this stage. We're going to move. We're going to dance with you. We're going to hold your hand. And the breakthrough is going to fall on you. Amen? Let's go back into that. Ready? Guys. Hail, hail to the lion. Pick up the face. Pick up the face. Hail, hail to the lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the great I am. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the great I am. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the Release your war dance. Release your war dance. Release your war dance. Dance for victory. Dance for victory. Release your war dance. Release your war dance. Release your war dance. Dance for victory. Dance for victory. Release your war dance. Come on. Release your war dance. Release your war dance. Give me a full beat. Come on. Come on, release that dance now. I want everybody in this place. Move your feet. Come on. This is about breakthrough. This is about breakthrough. Come on, let's battle, people. Let's battle the darkness out of here. Come on, set yourselves free. It's up to you. Come on, you got a little jump. Little jump, there it is. One little jump. One jump will set you free. Come on, it's a dance of war. It's a dance of a battle.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Bondages are broken when Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. There is breakthrough. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep it going, keep it going. Well, I was over there, the Lord showed me. Gates, we're at the gates. We gotta break through the gates. We gotta break through. The, you're right at the tip. You're right at the entrance. I don't know what happened to my co-laborers, my pastors. They think it's over. <laughs> but let me tell you something. We're right at the gates, and a lot of times the people stop at the gates. You stop at the gate. You know what the gate is? The gate is where you can reach through the gate and maybe grab some crumbs. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of crumbs. You're right at the gate, and some of you are tired. <gasps> Dash, come up here. Come up here. Yeah, you. Yeah. Vargas. I need you up here. You know how to war. You know how to war. Let's be right there. See, we're right at, the, come on here. We're right at the gates. And I, I, as I said earlier, I'm tired of crumbs. I'm tired of begging. And we need to break the gates down. So the Holy Spirit is asking you, will you give it all you have for the next two minutes? Will you press through in the next two minutes? And I guarantee you, if we press through, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's go for it. We're right at the gates. Got to press through. Prophesy. 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 Prophesy.
breaking down the gates, 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 breaking down the gates. Hallelujah. No more. No more restrictions. No more restrictions. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. We got to determine our breakthrough. We press through. in the ministry you know what I've learned Unless sometimes when we're right at the step of breakthrough we're so tired we give up we say God I gotta rest I can't press anymore and God's telling you tonight you press tonight your breakthrough has happened your breakthrough has happened because you know how to press you know how to give it all you have when you're tired and you want to give up. But the Bible says that when they were exhausted, they yet pursued. We need to pursue our victory. I got a couple of knees that I wish they were new, but I get up and do my little two-step. But I've learned. It doesn't matter if your heart is ready to press through, God will give you the victory. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Angel, uh, and I think Pastor Pete, you guys play football, right? Uh, Mike, did you ever play football? <laughs> But, but, you know, I know Pastor H and Pastor Pete know this, is that when you're tired and the game's on the line, the coach won't let you rest. They don't say, okay, it's all right. I know you gave it your all. They say, well, get your butt out there and let's have the victory. So right now I was a coach in the spirit because I could sense that gate was right there and we were satisfied at the gate, I want to go in. I want to take what rightfully belongs to me. Amen. Praise God. Well, now that you're good seated, you are seated. We're going to receive an offering. Now, the conference is free, but we give honorariums to the men and God and the, and the musicians. How many love the, uh, like this worship team? Oh, man. You know, last night, for you, say for me, they were here until 12 o'clock midnight practicing for you because they would not want to cheat you. They're all from different churches. And, and, and I wish I could give them more and more, but you know what? The day will come that they'll be blessed. But what you're doing... The Bible says, sow seed. And I'm going to ask you today, see, we're going to be in Sanger in two weeks. And we're taking this worship team up there, this praise and worship team. And so I'm not going to beg you because, see, I've always trusted God to meet the needs of a rise man of God. But I'm giving you an opportunity that as you give tonight, you're giving to the men and people that will show up in Sanger and receive what God has for them 
in two weeks. So when you sow tonight, you're sowing into good ground. You're sowing into the kingdom of God. And see, these musicians, they're all from different churches. Five years. This is our fifth year, Arise, Bread of God. And, I, and only by the grace of God, we've come this far. Five years. This will be the last one of 2022 in Southern California and then up north. But I was thinking about it, and I'm in awe. can't find musicians that have a heart for God like this. And I just think they do it for God and the kingdom and the arisement of God. They're precious to me. And I know God's going to bless them, but I'm going to do what I can to bless them while they're on here on earth. So tonight when you're sowing, you're sowing for two weeks, Arise Men of God Conference. So I'm going to ask you to give your best. And also, if you need an envelope, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. But also, Pastor Angel, can you come in for a second and tell them how they can give on the... the yeah, maybe you didn't come with a cash or a check. And you said, I can't give. See that phone number there? That's share faith. You can dial that number on your phone, 714-477-7736. Dial that number. It'll prompt you. You hit the prompting. It'll take you where you can uh, enter in an amount. And uh, we'll go ahead and take care of the balance of it. Once you guys go ahead and put that amount in through your phone, you can put any amount. Whatever the Lord puts on your heart, go ahead and put it on there. If it's a dollar, it's a dollar. If it's $50, $100, $500, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, we just have to obey God. And God has something for you. Amen. We can never outgive God. So there's the number right there. Share faith. Thank you. By the way, let's give Pastor Angel a hand. He's a senior pastor from Turning Point Fellowship. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. And so anyway, go ahead and... Let's rejoice and just come up here with your envelopes and, and sow seed for Sanger.
magnificent, supernatural God, miraculous, victorious, so glorious, supernatural God, eternal, immortal, indivisible, supernatural a supernatural God. Amen. I want to have Pastor West pray over the offering. What a tremendous opportunity to sow into this ministry. We're a part of it as we sow our seed. That seed is pushed forward into the kingdom of God forever. So, Father, we thank you for these tithes and offerings. We thank you for using them for your purpose and your glory to further the gospel of the Lord Jesus, that people's lives would be touched and transformed and people would be set free and people would come to the knowledge of the truth of Jesus and give their life to the Lord. Use it all for your glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. And everyone said... Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Just a couple of things we need to do right now. Uh, let's give the Lord a hand for the worship team. Amen. You know, I just want to give you a little update on the rise men of God. I think we had seven conferences this year from Northern California to Southern California to Las Vegas. And next year, the Lord showed me that they're gonna, we're going to do more. I believe we're going we're gonna to fill it up. And, and I'm believing that God's going to open doors because you know, what's so awesome is I don't have to beg anyone. I say, Pastor, would you be willing to host us? Sure, come on. Because there's a reputation about a rise men of God that's going up north that they know it's not about Pastor Eric. I, I'm so happy about that. It's about a rise men of God. Amen. Amen. And I tell you. After we get back, and we're going up to Sanger 7 and 8. I'll be back the following week, and I'm going to give a great praise report of what God did that day, those weekends. Amen. But God has shown me even how to pray. It's a prayer of Jabez, of those that know it. That's the prayer I'm praying for a rise of God, and I'm believing for continue to expand our territory for the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Before we bring up the speakers, um, I know this brother's name, but where is he? Where? Uh, come on up here. I remember his name because it sounds so familiar. Come on, run up here. Come on, brother. Oh. Wow. I'm touched. I didn't know that you were going to do that, Eric. <laughs> No, it's not for me. It's for his lovely wife, Kim. So, Kim, come on up. And we're going to sing. Let's all sing happy birthday on the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Hey. To you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you. Kimberly, would you like to say? 
Thank you, everyone, and thank you to my husband for the beautiful flowers. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. I didn't want to pass up that opportunity, even though the flowers were not for me. I'll just go home and, you know, Eric, you bring some flowers for me next week. <laughs> Praise God. The Rise Man of God has been going five years. This is our fifth year. I'm so excited about year number six because I believe there's going to be an expansion. But what's so awesome is the speakers we have tonight. I met Pastor Mike Gomez uh, a while back. He's my brother-in-law's pastor, and he was doing their anniversary service. And I felt in my spirit to invite him and ask him if he would come up. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I forgot. Come here, Mabel. I forgot. I looked at her. Now, this is Mabel. And she did this painting right now. <laughs> and you want to share? Um, I had a scripture, so. Okay. God bless y'all. <laughs> so... What the Lord showed me um, was, um, I, I believe it's in Luke 15, 4, where it says, What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, will he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go in search of the one that is lost? And I know that, you know, even in the ministry of what God has done with you, you always go after the one. Just like, you know, Jesus would go after the one. Because, you know, everyone else is, well, everyone else is good and, and there. Um, I kept seeing, you know, some of them go astray. But you would drop everything just to go after the one to bring them back. And that's what I kept seeing the Lord do um, as you were playing even, they were playing even the lion. <laughs> and I was painting a lion because I was like, Lord, what am I going to paint? And he gave me that scripture, you know, that um, it's just the heart of the Father. And I wrote love and a heart because of what he did for us on the cross and what he shed his blood for us. Um and that, that's it. That's my simple word. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I was so uh, blessed. I had asked her if she would be able to come and minister prophetically her drawings. And she's very awesome. Woman of God. Praise God. Pastor Mike, I met him a couple of weeks, about a month ago, at my uh, brother-in-law, sister-in-law's anniversary. And I just felt in my spirit to ask him if he would come. And he brought some men from his church. If you're from Pastor Mike's church, raise your hand. Or? All right. They took over a whole row. Praise God. Amen. Glad. I'm, I welcome you. I'm glad that you were able to make it. And then after Pastor Mike, then we have Pastor Evangelist uh, Wes Cleaver, man. I tell you, this, this is another brother that I asked. He goes, what do you want to do? And He's a, you know, so tonight, put on your seatbelts, because I know God has a great word for you. And uh, just for Pastor Wes and Mike, just to let you know, so I can get a chance to talk to you, is that we really will not have an altar call tonight, because I need to get the ministers home for tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, men only, okay? So get him out, you know, get him out, and, and please don't, I don't want you to tell your pastors or your... Well, you know, I'm just so tired. I need my rest. Man, when we were in the club, I used to party until 5 in the morning and then go to work at 7. But now when we become Christians, I need my rest. I'm so tired. I'm sorry, Pastor Angel. I can't make it to church. Come on, man. Rise up because God's going to impart tomorrow. We're going to pray. We're going to anoint you with fresh oil for 2023, because we need to be ready for what's going to happen next year. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up and give the Lord a hand for Pastor Mike Gomez.
Oh, God bless you. It's good to be here. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. As uh, Brother Eric was saying, I'm, I'm Pastor Mike Gomez from uh, Calvary Chapel, the Assemblies of God there in L.A., Northeast L.A., amen, and I think just because of our, of the distance and because of the day and the time, actually, quite a bit of our guys did want to make it. Uh, they, it was just some of them are in the alley and stuff. It's quite a drive. Um, I do apologize for that, but uh, we're here, amen. I am from Guatemala. I'm the tallest, I'm the tallest one. And some of you have met, I'm aware of that. Um, it is good. You know, before I start, uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 5. Uh, but before I start, I just want to say, uh, you know, September 23rd. Uh, September 23rd, uh, I remember that night. I remember that night, uh, that morning actually. It was a long night. And I remember finally going to sleep. Uh, getting a couple of, a few minutes of sleep that night on the 22nd to wake up on the 23rd. Um, you know, I woke up to plates in the, plates in the living room and uh, windows broken and, and doors all over the place. And we lived in a little apartment and my wife had actually left the night before. We had been about divorce for quite a while. At that point, and it, we got into a huge fight, and and I remember waking up with to my to that little apartment, in, right in the ghetto, right there on Vernon and Avalon in Los Angeles, and and I remember waking up that morning, and my the, the apartment was a mess of the of the mess we had made a night before, and my wife had left, she had left at like three in the morning, took my son with her, and. And I remember waking up that day and looking at my life, looking at that apartment, that empty apartment with my son, practically going to repeat my story, um, was going to be repeated on him. And I remember all the words of my grandfather. And, and I looked at that place. I actually went over to my mom's house and told, her, told my mom, my marriage is over. And I don't know what to do. And my mom said to me, go to, go to church. <laughs> my mom said to me, go to church. And, and uh, I, 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 I believed her. I believed her, and then I went home. I went home to change so I could go to church. But when I got home, I saw my apartment again and the situation we were in. And, and I said, I'm going to go to church. I looked up to heaven. I said, Lord, I'm going to go to church, but I'm not going to go alone. I'm going to go get my wife, and I'm going to go get my son, and we're all going to go to church. And that was September 23rd, 18 years ago today. And God has been faithful. And I tell the church this every Sunday or as much as I can, God is not in the business of destroying families. He's in the business of restoring families. Amen? God has been good. And I want you to look at Luke chapter 5, verse 17 real quick. Hallelujah. Because uh, Pastor Eric was saying something about a door. We're standing at a door. Amen. We're standing at a gate. Uh, here we're going to look at a door here. And some men that were determined to have a breakthrough. Amen. And they were not going to allow anything to stop them. So let's look at what the word of God says. Luke 5, 17, the Bible says this. Now it happened on, that, on, on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who, sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And now look at this. This is so powerful. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before Jesus. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop, on the roof, and let him down with his bed through the tiling of the roof into the mist before Jesus. They were determined. Amen. They were not about to let anything stop them. When he saw their fate, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven, are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? 
Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning within your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power, amen, on earth to, to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately, immediately he rose up before them, took up, took up, uh, took up what he had been laying on, and departed to his own house glorifying God, and they were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. That's not strange, amen? That's the power of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you all the honor. This time is your time, Holy Spirit. Have your way in this place, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. We give glory to God, amen? Jesus here is at the beginning of his ministry in the region of Galilee, uh, by the Sea of Galilee or, or, or Lake Genesaret, as they call it. That, that's where he, that, this is the place where he called John and his brother Andrew and, and John and Jacob. And uh, this is, uh, this is the, the, the region of Galilee. And he had been in Capernaum and he healed the centurion's servant. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. And, and many were brought to him, and, and, and he healed them. And again, he comes into Capernaum again uh, 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 after some days, and he could not go in. He could no longer come into the town un, un, unannounced. He actually, if you read at the book of Mark, this same passage, he, he came in. Uh, um, he comes in silently because he could no longer enter, enter into the town uh, uh, just, just because he had healed so many. He had healed a leper which had come into Capernaum and told everybody. Even Jesus had told them, don't tell anyone what I have done for you. But this leper was a chismoso. Amen. He went in the town and he told everybody. Because when Jesus really has done a work in your life, amen, you cannot stay quiet. Amen. You have to say the goodness, the goodness that you have seen in the Lord and what God has done for you. So he couldn't go in because of that. She's most a leper who told everybody what Jesus had done. And now he comes into the house. And, and, and most likely, most theologians agree or, or believe that this was actually Peter's house. And, and, and immediately many gather. When, when Jesus is in the house, amen, Jesus attracts, amen. Jesus, Jesus brings people. When, when, when the gospel is there, when Jesus is present in the house, amen, people come seeking Jesus, amen. Jesus did not hang out with sinners. Sinners hung out with Jesus, amen. And what's, what is the difference? Because when a believer hangs out with sinners, it's kind of like he wants to become like the sinners. But when sinners hang out with believers, or in this case, with Jesus, they wanted to become like Jesus. Amen? I go to a bar because I want to hang up. No, no, no. That's a different message, all right? But... You know, so but when, when, when he was there, the people crowded the house and there was no room in the house. And actually they crowded the house to, a, to such a degree that the door, the door was crowded with people and, and, and the door was covered with people. They were, there were so much. The door, the door, now I want you to look at this because the door was not closed. It was just being burdened by people. Uh, and we must be careful. We must be careful. And we must ask the Lord for discernment to know the difference between closed doors and doors that are burdened. Amen. We must know the difference because we must know also, we know this, that when God opens a door, no man can shut it. And when God closes it, no man can open it. Amen. We know this. And we must know the difference. Amen. We must know the difference. We must have the sermon. And the sermon only comes, only comes through fellowship with Jesus Christ, with getting in the Word of God and spending time with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is not given to you by someone or laying of, I, I know that, but I know that it comes out of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. If, and, 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 and because of the crowd, they could, they, there's four men that want to bring their friend who is a paralytic, who cannot walk by himself. And they want to bring him into the house before Jesus. And, 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 they, and they find a, a crowd of people. And because of the people, they cannot bring in their friend into the presence of Jesus. And this just lets me know that sometimes the biggest obstacle for people to get to Jesus is the people that are around Jesus. 
Amen. God help us. Amen. God help us. God help us. Amen. All of us. Not, not just this. Is, believe me, every time I speak, I'm speaking to myself. And, and, and you know, Jesus was preaching the word of God to them. He was teaching them the kingdom, that the kingdom had come near, and that they needed to repent, and that they needed to believe. Amen. That's the message of the gospel. And, 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 and Jesus was preaching the word of God. And I just want I just have a recommendation for you because there's ministries in here. There's some of you that have been called, that are sitting right here that I've been called to preach and and when you do that when you preach I want you I just want to encourage you today to preach the gospel amen to preach the word of God don't change it don't out don't alter it preach the word of God do not add to it and do not take away from it preach the word of God why because the word of God is enough amen the word of God is enough it's powerful to bring deliverance into a life. We need the word of God. Amen. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. And, you know, so now the Bible also tells us that there were Pharisees in the house. It was crazy. Because as we look at the other gospels, the gospel of Mark and also the gospel of Matthew, where this story is told, it says that the Pharisees and the scribes were, were came from all over to hear what Jesus was preaching. They weren't there to hear what Jesus was preaching. They were there to approve if, if, if they approve what Jesus was teaching. And, 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 it's, and it's funny because there were people standing all over the house, but they somehow found a seat in the front row. Give it to religious folk, amen? And, and I'm not going to look at nobody. I'm just going to look at my notes. I'm not here for that, okay? You know, they were sitting down. They were sitting down and... and, and, and You know, actually, let me make a small parenthesis here. Is this your baby girl? Is this you guys' baby girl? Is this your daughter? What's your name? Riley. Riley. Do you like to sing? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask you to come up here and sing. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just asking you. Just to, do you like to sing? You do, mom. That's going to be a worship leader right there. Okay. I, our, some of our members at church are here. I, I rarely do this. The Holy Spirit has been fighting me this whole time. And I got to tell you, that's going to be a worship leader. Okay. And this word is not so much for her, but for you. Okay. You got a worship leader right there. You, got gonna, you have right there someone that is going to break chains when they hear her singing. Okay? And, and it's you are going to have to guard that with prayer. Baby girl, Jesus loves you so much. You're going to touch many lives. Enjoy. Amen. And may the Lord bless you, baby girl. And, and let's go back to the to the message, I just couldn't, I couldn't keep going, I couldn't keep going uh, uh, um, without saying this because the Lord is good, amen. And the Lord has called us ever since we were before children, amen. We since before we were born, the Lord, our, the Lord already knew us, amen. You know that the, these Pharisees were sitting in the house and they were sitting; their posture was wrong. And, 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 you know, because when you're in the house in the presence of the Lord, when you're in the house of the Lord, and, and you, you, you cannot, you cannot have, they, they were sitting down because they wanted to approve of what Jesus was doing. They wanted to give their either approval or their, or, 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 or their negative comment to what Jesus was doing. But in reality, when we come to the house of the Lord, we must be expectant. Amen. We must be humble before the presence of the Lord. We must be ready to worship. Amen. We must be ready to praise. And we must be ready to receive what God has for us. Amen. And, 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 and you know, expectant. The scribes were there taking, their on, taking the honor seats. Amen. They, they loved the honor seats. And, and they, were, they were there to render approval of what Jesus was doing. And they, they had an unteachable posture. 
And that is very dangerous. And sometimes as we walk with the Lord, as we walk, as we do church, you know, and we, we love the Lord, but sometimes we may fall into that. So let's be careful of, 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 of getting an unteachable attitude in our hearts. Amen. And let us check ourselves mostly. Amen. Our, our hearts need to be right in the, the right position with God. And some of us just flat out need to reposition ourselves. Amen. Psalms 100 says, come before his presence with singing. Amen. Know that the Lord, he is God and, and he who has made us. And, and, and not, we have not made ourselves. We are his people. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Amen. That's the key to come into the house of the Lord anyways. With, with thanksgiving and with praise. Amen. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Actually, Deuteronomy 16, 16 says that let no man come before the presence of God empty-handed. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not about to pick up an offering. I'm talking about a, a, a gratitude attitude. Amen. I'm talking about praise and worship. Amen. Do not come. Actually, it is illegal for you to show up in, before the presence of God empty-handed. Amen. We must reposition ourselves. Revival is here. We must have, our hearts must have the right posture, the right attitude. Why? Because revival is here. Revival is here. See, revival is, it reminds me of a plane about to land. See, because we're, we're asking God for revival. Revival's here already. But, but sometimes when a plane is about to land, it, there's no room in the, in, the, in the airfield for the plane. So what a plane will do when there's no room for the plane is it will circle around and, and come, try to come back. And, 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 and sometimes when there's no room in that airport, the plane will go to another airport. Amen? Because it has to land somewhere. Amen? Lord, don't, don't, don't go down this, the other church. They, I know they love you and they're good people, but we want you here, Lord. Amen? We want, we want revival in this house. Amen? It, it is, you know, when the landing strip is not ready, they tell the airplane to go around or to go to another airport. God is not waiting to send revival. Revival is here. It, it's just circling around. The hearts of our people need to be hungry, need to be ready, need to be desperate. Amen? For, for the move of God. Amen. And to answer the call, revival comes to desperate people and hungry people. Amen. A, a, a we don't care what they think about us type of people. And I know that's us right here. And I know, I know that's this people right here. You know, the Pharisees began to reason with them in, in themselves. They said, Jesus, and Jesus looks at them and said, why are you reasoning in your heart? You see, sometimes that's the mistake we make. We begin to reason. We, they begin to reason. And, and, you know, sometimes I, today, today, the, I did construction for 25-something years. I know my way around, around, uh, uh, around structures. I know how, it, how it's put together. Okay? I'm not an engineer, but I know. I know because I've done it. And I told one of the guys, we couldn't get some cables through, through a wall and stuff. Just at church, today, today. And yesterday, the, the, the worship team, they called me. Pastor, they didn't cut a hole. Don't worry. I'll cut it tomorrow. How are you going to do it? Mijo, don't worry about it. When you get there tomorrow, there's going to be a hole in the wall. But, 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 but we're going to run the cable around. Mijo, hey, mijo, when you get there tomorrow, there's going to be a hole in the wall. <laughs> but they wanted me to tell them how I was going to do it. And if I begin to tell them how I'm going to do it, they're not going to understand anyways because they don't know what a rim joist is. Some of, uh, some of us do. But they don't. One of them, it's a paralegal. He has no idea what a rim joist is or a 2 by 12 I know he may go to Home Depot, but he don't know what it is. And, and they began to reason, right? They began to reason in their hearts. And, and sometimes that's the mistake that we make. We begin to reason and ask Jesus how he's going to do it, you know. And, 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 and they asked him. And, and, you know, I, I'm reminded of that blind man that, that Jesus, when, they, when, when Jesus encounters this, this blind man, the, the, the disciples around him and the people around, they, they ask him, who, who sinned? Did he sin or did his parents sin? Because at that time they associated all of these sicknesses and illnesses with sin. And, and, and they said, who sinned? Did his parents? And Jesus said, no, not him, not his parents. This is for the glory of God. 
Amen. And, and then they, they, when he healed this blind man and, and, and the Pharisees, here are the Pharisees again, the religious leaders, they brought the man. They brought the parents of the man who was blind. They, who, he, who did it? By what authority did, they, did he do it? And then, then the parents, because they were actually afraid of the religious leaders, they said, we don't know. He's grown. Ask him. And the blind man comes. I love his answer when they ask the blind man. He says, I told you before. I don't know. He says, all I know, this is all I know. His name is Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's all we need to know. Amen. That's all we need to know. He says, his name is Jesus. Before I met him, I was blind. After I met him, I can see. I, I don't know how he did it. Amen. And, and I love his answer because he didn't reason. He said, all I know is that I met a man named Jesus. He restored me. He, he, he put his spirit in me. I don't know how he did it. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't do it for somebody like me. But God is great in his mercy. Amen. And, and he says, why are you reasoning into your hearts? In your hearts. Why are you reasoning? Believe. Believe in your heart. Believe the gospel, church. I just want to tell you, let us believe the gospel and the, and the promises of God. Let's trust the Lord and his promises. Amen. To overcome. And to, to, to have an encounter with God. And I don't know how it's possible. I can't explain it. But I have encountered God. I, I cannot explain how, how, how from one day to the other, one day to the other, God changed my heart. Drugs were gone. Alcohol was gone. The, the, the infidelity, all that lust, it was gone. I don't know how. All I know is that I encountered Jesus. Now, these four friends, I like these four friends. I love these four friends. Amen. We need friends like this. We need friends like this, amen. They're bringing him to the, to, the, to the house where Jesus is. And actually, most theologians, again, believe that this was Peter's house. And if you read the Gospel of Matthew, this story, Matthew only says the miracle. And Mark, you'll read, you'll read that they made a hole in the, in the roof. And because Mark is a, it's a, it's a, it's an account. Mark actually, uh, this disciple named Mark got, gathered all his information from Peter. Right? And, and, and so Peter told them, yeah, they made a hole on my roof. It's funny that Matthew only mentions the miracle, but Mark mentions the hole on the, on the roof. Amen? I, I can imagine Peter saying, yeah, praise the Lord for this miracle. Praise the Lord that he can see who's going to pay for this hole on the roof. Right? But that's just a little side note. They hit, the, they hit a wall of people. Again, sometimes the greatest obstacles that we find. To reach Jesus are the people that are around Jesus. And, you know, revival miracles are usually not guarded by burden. They're, they're, they're usually not, not burdened by walls of, they're, they're usually burdened by walls of religious people. People who are just being expectators. And, and sometimes people can't find Jesus because they're structures that we have placed around and people want to find Jesus. And sometimes we're the ones that do not allow people to come and find Jesus. A very good friend of mine looked at me very in the eye and said to me, you know what, Mike? God loves the lost so much that he won't send them to your church. He said that to me, looking at me dead in the eye. He said, you need to change some things here. And he gave me some sound, good advice on things to do. You see, some structures, some structures, some, some structures don't work anymore. Some stuff doesn't work anymore. And we must move and be guided on the word of God and by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. We must move on, on, on the word of God. Some, because sometimes some words that we received 10 years ago will not work right now. You know, because Abraham received a word from God. And that word was sacrifice your son. But that was on the lower level. When he got to a higher level, they, imagine if he would have kept that word. There was a new word for him, a new revelation for him. And God, the word on top of the mountain was hold the knife. Look at that bush. There is, there is Jehovah Jireh is there. 
Amen. And, and you, see, you see some structures on where Abraham received the word from God. And then and the, the word was to hold back the knife. There's a ram tangled in the bush. You know, we need a rim of word from God. Amen. We need a word of God specific for today. Amen. We need a new move of God. Revival. Revival needs to come into our lives. Needs to come into our churches. Needs to come into our houses. Amen. Needs to go from the church to the house. Has to go to from the church to the house. You know, and, and, and just, and I know I don't got much time left, but, but let's, let's look at a couple of things. In COVID, during that COVID time when nobody went to work and nobody went to school, if you were fighting at home, actually, as a matter of fact, if your home is healthy, every home has a deep fellowship with the wife. Okay? I, that's, that's just, ask my wife. She'll be the first one to tell you. And, and, but, but in reality, when you're a healthy family, when Jesus is the center of your home, during COVID, you should have gotten closer. Closer to your family and closer to the Lord. And if you didn't, there's some areas where you need to repent and you need to seek counseling from your pastor or from some elders. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Sometimes at my church, they get it really quiet. And I'm not sure if it's the good kind of quiet or the bad kind of quiet. Like, like praise the Lord quiet or we're going to wait for you in the parking lot quiet. All right. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure sometimes. But, but you, know, you know, these four friends, these four friends find a wall of people and, and obstacles that, would, that did not let them through. And, and then sometimes we do get to the gate. But there's obstacles at the gate. And, and, and well, you know, what, what we need to do when we hit that. And, and sometimes we will not be able to go through the door. And, 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 and sometimes be, not because the door is closed, but because there's obstacles in the doors, we need, we need to go to a higher level. Eh? And when we find obstacles, we need to go to a higher level. Well, the roof wasn't a level. It doesn't matter because it wasn't meant for, for, it, for it to be a level. It wasn't meant for it to stand on. It, it, it doesn't matter. We're going to make it a level. Amen. We're not leaving until our friend it, it gets in the presence of Jesus. Amen. That's, I love the attitude that they had. This is the people that we need to surround ourselves with. Amen. I'm looking for people that are willing to go to a higher level. Amen. How do I go? How, what does it look like me going to a higher level practically? It means you worship harder. Amen. You worship deeper. It means you praise more. It means, it means you pray a little longer. Amen. It means you go deeper with Jesus in prayer. It means you read a little bit more. Amen. You see, because we, we sometimes, we sometimes over-spiritualize everything. Amen. And sometimes it's just the practicality of it. And, and, and we just need to, to praise a little longer. Sometimes we just need to pray a little longer. Amen. Amen. Do you know sometimes I get mad at people? I used to get mad at my pastor, and it was during prayer that the Holy Spirit would begin to put a little dagger. It's like, hey, you need to go ask for forgiveness. And sometimes I would say, no, 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 I'm not going to listen to you. But, but you, 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 can't, you can't spend time with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because he will win all the time. And, and we just need to, what does it look like to go to a higher level? It, it looks praising a little bit longer, praising a little bit louder, amen? And worshiping a little bit deeper, amen? Servicing, amen? Being a servant a little bit, a little bit, a little bit deeper, amen? Loving a little bit more, amen? Loving like you've never been hurt, amen? God is calling us higher, church. There's a reason why there's a wall. There's a reason why there's obstacles. Because God is calling you to go higher than those obstacles. Amen. I'm going to wrap it up because those guys back there keep putting signs. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just joking. I, 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 we we got to keep order. Amen. Amen. Do everything decently and in order. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. And, and, but, but look at this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with this. Guys, we'll go, we'll go, to, my, we'll, we'll go to Denny's if you want after this. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, but look at this. I'm going to wrap this up with this because this is what I see that, that is really some of our problems today. All of us, not just the newcomers, not just, no, all of us. And, and, and see, the gospel of, of, of Matthew says, gospel of Luke, the passage that we read says, and the power of God was present to heal them. Look at what the word of God says, them. Now, here's the Pharisees. There's groups of people. There's the disciples. There's the crowd that were listening. There's 
the Pharisees that are there in the, sitting down in the best seats, approving or disapproving. Well, they were actually disapproving because they didn't like us. And then there was the crowd of people. There were the people that were at the door and there were the people that were around. Then there's the four and the paralytic. And, 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 and you see, the Bible here says that the power of, of, of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of God was present. And here's my problem with the text and my problem with all the people in the house. How come only one was healed? How come only one got a breakthrough? And I believe that the crisis today in our churches is not what we think. It's not our political views. It's not our divided country. It's not the obstacles in our lives. It's, 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 it's when, when you encounter God, you know, when, when we encounter God, I think, I think that, that the problem, the, the reason why the church is not on fire, that the church is not seeing, the problem that, 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 that why we're not seeing the miracles that are described in, in the Bible, that we only see uh, like one here and one over there and, and one over there and one in that church and one in that church over there. And I believe the problem that why we're not seeing the fullness of the promises of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our lives is because the church has failed to see what's really in the room. They, the Bible says that the power of God was there to heal them. Them means a bunch of people. And only one got healed. And, and I just wanna, I just wanna tell you today, we need to see what's in the room, church. There is deliverance in the room. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is, there is restoration in the room. There is healing in the room. There is callings of God in the room, and we are not seeing it. And we need to ask the Lord, and we need to get deeper with God, and we need to go to higher levels, and we need to pray deeper, and we need to pray longer, and we need to worship a little louder. We need to worship a little deeper until we begin to see what's really in the room, because this is more than a building. This is more than believers, that God is in this place, and his power is here, his deliverance is here, the breakthrough of God is in this place and we need believers with, with real discernment from God to see it to see what's in the room to see what's in the room to see what's in the room and sometimes we fall into it we fall into it as a pastor we fall into, into just going to the word because we got to teach on Sunday mornings and we forget and we fail to see what's in the room. Jesus is here today. Jesus is here today. And his, his deliverance, that miracle, that breakthrough. Some of us come in here with shackles, spiritually speaking, that can be broken as soon as you step into the room because the power of God is here. But we're not seeing it. We're not seeing it. And I want to pray tonight. Just in, and I'm going to overstep my boundaries and pray the prayer that Elisha, Elisha with the S, sorry, ESL, uh, prayed for his, for his servant. I apologize for that. I'm from Guatemala. I came here when I was 10, okay? And, and I didn't speak a, a word of English. I've had to learn some of this stuff. And, and, but I, I'm going to pray that prayer that Elisha prayed for his servant. Because his servant said, oh, master, they're going to kill us. They sur they're surrounding us. The king of Syria had come. He wanted to kill Elisha. Because Elijah was telling the king of Samaria everything that was going to happen. And he said, don't worry. There are more with us that are with them. And then he said, and he made the prayer. He said this prayer, Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes. That he may see. And when he opened his eyes, the Lord answered the prayer of the prophet. And he opened the eyes of the servant. And the servant saw that around them was chariots of fire. Between them and the chariots of the king of Syria. So right there where you are, I just want to close your eyes. And I'm going to close it with this. Lord, open our eyes. Holy Spirit, open our eyes. Reveal your word to us. Father God, that we may see what's present in the room, Lord. 
may see, Father God, that your, that your blessings, that your word is true for us, Lord. That your promises are true, Father God. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes. Holy Spirit, come and touch tonight. In Jesus' name, Lord, that we may see what's in the room, Lord. That your power is here, that your breakthrough is here, Father God. And if we are determined, Father God, even if there's obstacles, we will go to a higher level, Father. But we will not leave. We will not stop until, Father God, your promises come to pass, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we give you the honor tonight, Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We give glory to God. We give glory to God. You can be seated. What a tremendous uh, understanding of that scripture. You know, um, it makes the difference that Jesus is in the house. You know, remember that it was noise that he was in the house. You know, sometimes we have, you know, we can be at places and there can be different people or movie stars or this or that. But there's no one greater than Jesus being in the house because that makes all the difference. The Bible says his name is the name above every name. The Bible says at the, knee of, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says that at that name of Jesus even the devils and demons tremble at that name. And the Bible says in Psalms 103 that the angels are hearkening unto the voice of God and unto the word of God to be activated to move on our behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there's different parts in the body. You know, the Bible says apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the building up and for the edifying of the body of Christ. And not they don't have the same function, although they have, but although they have, there's different offices, but it's the same revolve, you know, getting to the same end to equip and build people up for the work of the ministry. So that Ephesians chapter 8 or 9, 10 right there, the 11, 12, 13, I think it's 11, but 12 and 13 give you the reasons for it. And I'll just make a simple illustration about those fivefold ministry that uh, the Bible says that we're given to the body of Christ as servants. And it's amazing how God has chosen the fivefold ministry as a gift to the body of Christ to help the body of Christ and every member in particular all the way through until the coming of the Lord Jesus. I love that. And I just say it like this. There's never a competition because the Bible says that God has set us in the body as it's pleased him, right? And there's many members in the body, and they have different functions or parts, but it all makes up one body. And I always say this, that although I'm one person, you'll call me by my name, Wes, I have many members, a foot, a hand, an elbow, a knee, fingers and toes. But even though I have all of those members, they're never competing with the next member to do their part. Because I'd look funny, you know, like gymnasts are pretty good, right? And if I walked in here on my hands straight down, everybody would be, yeah, that's kind of cute, but why don't you just walk now? You know, because it looks good that you can walk on your hands, but you couldn't do that for a mile, right? And then I'll just say the side note, in a football team, you know, the quarterback is never practicing with the linemen. The linemen are practicing stuff to pull stunts and to block and trap blocks. The quarterback's not thinking about that. He's just throwing passes. The wide receiver are not working with the linemen because their job is to catch balls all day long. The defensive ends and the defensive tackles and the defensive linebackers aren't really too much uh, concerned about the scheme of the offense. They have their own job. But I say all that to say there's many members and many parts but to God be all the glory. Amen? So let me start right here. So and they'll, they'll give me the shout out there, right? Just 10 minutes and then 5 minutes and I'm good. Perfect. I always say this. I can preach fast and go fast. And I can get a whole hour sermon in, Brother Mike, in 30 minutes. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's the anointing or Red Bull. I can't tell you. <laughs> 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 
but determined for my breakthrough, right? If you saw the flyer and saw the conference, let me just give you the Webster's Dictionary for determined. Webster's meaning is having reached a decision, firmly resolved, a firm intent, purposeful, resolute, resolutely set, single-minded to do or die, I'm determined. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing, determined for your breakthrough, but it has to start with you, and it has to start with me. We have to be determined to want to walk this thing out and live for the glory of God, to have the testimony of the Lord Jesus. They said they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. That's a commitment. And to be determined for a breakthrough, I'll read it again, we have to make a decision. We have to be firmly resolved, a firm intent, resolute, set, single-minded to do or die. I'm going to walk this out until the end. My family's depending that I walk it out until the end. My kids are depending not to see me drinking a beer on the house on a Friday night. They're determined to see me walking this thing out into the very end. And we have to make a commitment. We have to entrust ourselves to the Lord Jesus. We have to lean. See, I'm, I'm good, and I've learned to lean in to the All Things Are Possible network. I know that on an AM dial, an FM dial, I'm not talking about Siri, that's new age. I'm talking about an AM and FM dial. On the AM dial, you cannot get an FM station. And when you click over to FM, you can't get an AM station. They're on two different channels and signals. And there's a natural life and there's a spiritual life. And the Bible says if we live in the spirit, we also should just walk in the spirit. The Bible says that he's given us, according to Romans chapter 8, that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit, lives in us. And we're members in particular. And I'm not trying to do this on my own strength. I'm leaning on the strength of the Lord. But, 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 but we can step in to the all things are possible network where Jesus, you know, when they were telling him on the boat, they see Jesus walking and who, who's that? Peter saying, hey, Jesus, if it's you, just bid me to come out. Come out, because I'm in a natural boat. I'm in a natural surrounding. But at the word of Jesus, when he says come, he stepped out into a supernatural area. Because Jesus was walking in the supernatural. He was doing something that was supernatural that was not natural. And he was walking on the water. And they thought it wasn't him at the front. But when they saw it was him, Peter said, hey, Lord Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come. And at that word come, he stepped out and was walking on the water just like Jesus. And the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. See, I, I love that preaching because why don't we just live from a place of victory? Why don't at some point we just determine that we're going to be all in? Why don't we at some point, why don't we just determine that I'm really saved? The blood really did purchase all, uh, purge all my sin. That he really delivered me from the kingdom of darkness. Transmitted me to the kingdom of his dear son. That Jesus really did ascend on high. And presented his own blood on the mercy seat. To eternally purge mine and your conscience once and for all. And that he died and he was buried three days and he rose again. And the Bible says whoever believes and trusts in him shall never perish. And that he would give us a comforter that would be with us and live in us. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, who would guide us and lead us into all truth and righteousness. That I'm not trying to do it in my own strength. And when I'm weak, he's strong. And when I have nothing, he has everything. And when I can't do it, I'm leaning on his everlasting arm saying, Lord, I have nothing, but I have you. Catherine Kuhlman's ministry, she's given us uh, an understanding of that ministry. She said, I had nothing in the natural. I had no gifts to sing. I had no natural talents to paint, to do anything. But I said, Lord, if you could just use me, if you could just use this vessel, I'm willing to give myself to you. And in the natural, she had no talents, but she said, Lord, if you can use anything, use me. And you know, that's the cry of our heart, that God can use us. 
and our families. God can use us among our relatives. God can use us in our community. God can use us in our workplace. One puts a thousand to flight, two puts ten thousand. He can use nothing. He can take nothing and use it all for the glory of God. You and Jesus are always a majority. Yeah. Oh, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always. You and me just have to believe it. So determine, I gave you the definition, breakthrough, Webster's meeting, set in advance. An act of instant or moving through or beyond an obstacle. Breakthrough. I've broken through. I'm breaking through are all steps. A breakthrough. Moving through obstacles and situations that keep us. Oh, I can't do that. Why not? No, he's not looking for great qualifications. He's looking for someone yielded that will just say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Pastor saying, hey, we're going to set up for the such and such banquet, and we're looking for volunteers. Oh, that's a good place to raise your hand. Here I am. What are you doing? I'm serving. It all starts there. Jesus set them down on a great discord, and he said, hey, he started to wash their feet and then started to talk to them about that. That, you know, the greatest would be the, the, the least. And the towel that I'm girding is to show you my position of a servant. There's nothing greater. You know, when we leave and we get home, you know what he's going to say? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Even though we can sing, we can preach, we can teach, we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. But to God be all the glory. The Bible says they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. And notice, him confirming the word with signs and wonders following. So our part is just to say, Lord, here I am, and his part to say, yeah, here I am. Oh, look, look, ministry is easy. When you take a step, he just says, okay, that's great, and now let me just take a step and show them who I really am. Why? So he could be glorified among all men. That he would have the preeminence and everything. That he's the first begotten of the dead. So reading the definition together could go like this. Having reached a decision, I'm firmly resolved, I'm resolute, I'm single-minded to move through or beyond any obstacle. I'm going to break through, I'm going to break through, I'm going to break through. <laughs> Woo! Destined for breakthrough. Now let me, let me give you a couple stories here. Now this is a true story. This happened years ago. There was a, now there was a lady, she went to a service. As a, they had a guest speaker that was speaking that night. And when she got to the church, it was full uh, to capacity. Kind of like that story exactly that he was touching on when they went to the house. And it was noise that Jesus was in the house. It said there were so many people that they couldn't get in for the press. It just meant the crowd. There was too many. So they had to uh, do something else. They were determined not to give up. And they were determined for a breakthrough at that very moment. Why? There was other people that came to the house that night that couldn't get in, that turned around and went home. And you have to determine, and I have to determine within myself, within my family, within my kids, within my community, within my relatives, what I'm determined to do. The Bible says they saw their faith. He was paralyzed, laying on the cot, and Jesus saw their faith. So you could stand in the gap at any time and pray for your family. You could pray for your co-worker. You can pray for your children. And God can see your faith. And say, in, the, in the prayer of faith, we can save the sick and raise them up. According to James, the effectual, the effectual, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman will avail much. Or, or, or will have much power in the answer. Hallelujah. And so here's the story. The lady's going to church. The church is full. She can't get in. The ushers are there, and they're sadly, this is a true story, turning people away. 
And the lady didn't stop there. People went up and just went away, up and went away. We're sorry, we're too full. That's the truth. But she was determined to get in the meeting. And she took her shoe off. And she threw it over the ushers' heads. And then she said to the ushers, I'm sorry, my shoe is in there. I have to go get it. Now that's radical faith. But if you're, if you're in a situation... If you're in a situation, sometimes you have to get radical. Sometimes you have to go beyond the normal. Sometimes you're going to have to, like the woman with the issue of blood, you're going to have to press in. These guys had a friend, and they, they heard that Jesus was in the house. They, faith comes by hearing. They had to heal. They, he, and Mark, his ministry starts off with 10 or 11 miracles, one after another after another. Where Jesus was going, people were getting healed, they were getting set free, they were getting delivered, and they knew Jesus was a healer. And they knew their friend was in a condition that he couldn't get out of. And they did something, they pressed in. They pressed further than the natural person would. They were determined to get their healing or miracle from the Lord Jesus. And sometimes that's the radical kind of faith that it takes to get set free, to get healed in your body of any type of blood issues or diseases. Sometimes it takes that. See, good, huh? Sometimes it takes that. Sometimes it takes that. But it, you have to determine it within yourself. I heard one person say, you want revival? Draw yourself a three-foot circle, step into that circle, and you start revival right there. You start it right there in your bedroom, in your closet, in your secret place, on your walking path, wherever you're at. You start it right there. Let it, let it begin with you. Let it begin with me. Thank you, Pastor Angel, just for facilitating these type of meetings. I mean, these are meetings that are going to continue and continue as a remnant of God arises. This is what we're going to see on a natural basis. Pastor uh, Eric and your wife, you're on the forefront, the cutting edge of this, because this is what people need. They need the presence of God. They need a breakthrough. They need God in their life to help them in every situation. And it's not the same old, same old, where we're going to come, preach a message, sing a song, and pick up the offering like Jesus is not there. Like he's not there. Like he's absent from his own body. That he's not the head of the church, the first begotten of the dead. That he's not the messenger of the covenant. That he's not there in the church present. That you're not going to let him in. And some churches are just being churches. Just running churches. Running numbers. Running money. Running systems. Running uh, 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 departments. And, and, and where is the presence of God? Where is the presence of God? Where is the presence of God? He's never left us orphan, orphanous, orphanless. He's with us, always. But it's just a matter of us getting out of the way and allowing him his own place. Allowing him to be the head of the church. Allowing him to be first and foremost in everything we do. Taking our hands off certain things. And saying, Lord, we just want more of you. That's how the early church started. They went from house to house, breaking bread. And fear fell upon all the people. Because of what was happening. That they were serving a real living God. That was among them. That was in them. That was through them. That was moving. And they knew that this was a church. And they, they made mention to it earlier, the church been sleeping, not been awake. But God is shaking people up. Yeah, he has to. He's coming out. He's coming back for a body without spot and blemish. And he said, when I come, will I find faith? Young kids under 16 or 18 or 20, this is the best place you could be. Even if your parents are making you come, this is the best place you could be. Because you're going to be trained. God is going to help you. You're going to feel the presence of God, and you're going to know who he is. 
You're going to know the presence of God, the very tangible presence of God, and he can help you. Daniel, he'll be with you in everything you do. He's not expecting you to do everything. He's going to work with you in everything you do, and you'll be able to lean on him, and you'll be able to seek God while he can be found. And all of our in inabilities, God will help us. It's not the strong survive. It's not the strong make it. It's the redeemed of the Lord. Let them say so. Let them say so. Here's a second real story. They haven't flagged me yet back there. I'm okay so far. Jesus. I was going to a basketball game. I, was, I, w I went to Artesia High School in Lakewood, California, and this was a CIF game. It was in Orange County. And this is on that team. I was already out of high school, but I was going with three of my friends to see Charles and Ed O'Bannon in high school. Now, these guys went on from Artesia High School, went on to UCLA, and in their four years there, they had a full scholarship. They won a national title at UCLA. We went to the game, and when we got there, we got there early. And, and, and we had planned this for two weeks out. We're going to go see Ed and Charles, high school guys running, dunking, 6'9", six, 6'5", six, like the dual dynamic team, you know, taking their uh, team, CIF playoffs, one loss, you're out. You have to win every game. We couldn't get in. We got there, and they said it's sold out. There was no less than 100 people outside just walking around as upset as we were. It's sold out. Nobody could get in. People are walking. It's sold out. Don't even come in. I was with three of my friends, right? And we said, oh, no, we didn't come all this way, man, to not get in this game. Are you serious? We went around the back and started checking the windows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, now you know where I'm from, right? <laughs> I, can't, I, I was going to button my one shirt and show you that. Uh, with my shirt down, you see where I'm at, right? We, we tried to get in, and no, nothing was open. We went around, and we found out that somebody went in a door, and it didn't close all the way. We pried that door open. We went through the auditorium, walked our way back, and found ourselves right inside the gymnasium. <laughs> and so why are you saying that, Wes? Determine for a breakthrough. And you have to go. You have to be willing to go above, beyond what yourself is, your natural self. That lady that threw that shoe, she wasn't willing to say no to that. She was willing to say, wait a minute, excuse me, wait a minute, but my shoe is in there, I'm going to get it. And they weren't going to tell her no, she just walked right through. We had planned this for weeks, and we wanted to go, it was sold out. I know it wasn't right to do, but we were determined to get in. We were determined to see these guys. Those men that took their friend, and it says that it was noise that Jesus was in the house and he saw their faith. They were telling everybody, the press was at the front door, nobody could get in. But they weren't willing to stop there. Sometimes we have to be willing to go further. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's not always for ourselves. They were going further for someone else. They were going further for someone else, for a loved one. If news comes to you about a loved one, you take up your position right there in intercessory prayer. And you hold them up right in that spot and right in that place. Yeah. And it might take a little bit more than what we're used to to see the result. That's not normal to go up on someone's house and start to tear their roof off and drop your friend through. No, that's... That, that, that's, that's, a faith that, that, that's a faith that's going a, a, a above and beyond. Huh. Huh. Okay, so let's, let's turn to Mark chapter 10. Verse 46 through 52. I'll, I'll read it to you and then I'll go back. So Mark 10. 46 through 52. Thank you for staying up late tonight. I know tomorrow is going to be tremendous. It's the men's meeting, so send the men. So here we go. 
1046, let me read this to you. 1046 through 52, and here I go. So it starts here, and there came, and they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, that's Jesus, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, set by the highway side begging. And that's what they would do. He was blind. And when he heard that, uh, that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out even the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded to call him. And he came and he called the blind man saying unto him, be of good comfort, arise for he calls you. And he casting away his garments, rose up, came to Jesus, and Jesus asked him a question and said, What will you do that I should do for you? And, uh, and the blind man answered, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. So there's a lot here. And they came uh, to Jericho as he went, was going through Jericho with his disciples, Jesus. That, that's who they're talking about. And a great number of people were around him. And this is always the case when he was traveling in his ministry. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. Now, to beg, I got the definition on that. It was to entreat, to beseech, to implore, means to ask urgently, uh, beg, suggest, earnest, or insistence of asking. Like, can I please get a dollar? You see, can I please get a dollar? Sir, can I please have a dollar? I mean, you're begging and imploring earnestly for what you need. And that's how he made his living, just like the man at the beautiful gate who was paralyzed from his mother's womb, who was above 40 years old, and he was set at the gate daily. And when people went by, he would ask for alms also. Remember that guy at the gate there in Acts chapter 3. So verse 46 says that, 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of uh, David, have mercy on me. Now, even before Bartimaeus, there's a footnote, had uh, personal contact with Jesus, he believed him to be the Messiah because he started to call him by his covenant name, Son of David. And the, and, and the term Matthew used in his gospel was to prove to the Jews that Jesus was the promised Messiah as the son of David. So Jesus is passing by. He's got the disciples. He's got all the crowd thronging him. And Bartimaeus is sitting over there. Now he's blind. He can't see. He's not going to be able to press through the crowd like the lady with the issue of blood because he can't see. And how is he going to get to Jesus with all the people? But he has an idea. Jesus! 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 You know, that's sometimes all you need and I need is just that name. And sometimes that's all we need. We don't need any more than that. Me and my wife were in a car accident once on the 605 freeway. It was stop and go. Stop and go traffic about 5 or 6 in the, in the evening. This was several years ago. And I had my two kids in the back. And we're going, stopping, going, stopping. And we go and we stop. And I look in the rear view mirror. I'm driving. The car's coming too fast. I know it's coming too fast. I know it's going to hit us. I don't have time to quote a psalm. I don't have time for a long prayer. All I said is, Jesus! And that car hit me, and it felt like it tapped me. We pulled over. I was like, are you okay? Are you okay? Is everybody okay? Looked at the car like nothing happened. Had one second to call one name, Jesus! And that name is enough to put you over. That's enough to help you. It's enough to help your family. It's enough to knock hell off your kids and get them delivered. That name of Jesus. It still holds power in the name. Power. Wonder working power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Going to church is not boring. It's, it's fun. It's fun. Because it's a living God among us that's leading us. And he's helping us. And he's developing us into people that are bigger than ourselves. So when a situation comes, we're going to stand. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. 
And do what? Have your loins girded about with truth and take the blessed plate of righteousness and the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation to remind yourself and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching with all perseverance for all saints. Not just us four and no more. Are you kidding me? Us four and no more. As long as we're okay, as long as we're okay, what? The Bible said you're part of the body of Christ. You're members one of another. We're watching for all saints to lift them up in prayer and supplication before God that he would help them in whatever they're facing. Just the same way he helped you and me. The same way that we were all messed up and tore up from the floor up and God had mercy on us. He was patient with us. He was long-suffering. He was forbearing us that when no one knew, you knew and he knew. I'm pretty good at this, huh? But I would never take credit. Because he saved me from the miry pit. And the Bible says, to whom much is forgiven, the same shows much love. I know where I came from. I know what I was bound to. I didn't even know there was principalities and powers trying to destroy my life at a young age. I had no idea. And I couldn't fight against them because I wasn't saved and born again. But when I got saved and born again, I was like, oh yeah, now it's on, like Donkey Kong. I just resolved that they're never going to leave me alone. So let me take my position up then. All right, you're going to throw a punch? Go ahead. Take your best shot. Like that song, hit me with your best shot. Because I'm going to get some people, shake them up, lay my hands on the sick, and watch them recover for the glory of God. Take your best shot and let me take mine. Mano y mano. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Woo! Where are you at? I'll be honest. I'm in the spirit world. What are you doing over there? I'm preaching to my generation. That's been hit, but God is reviving us. He's restoring us. He's working, and the fire of God is stirring in the church. Once again, I missed it, man. I missed it. (laughs) And he started crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And look at the next verse. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. That word charge also says rebuked him. But he cried out the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy. They'll always try to stop you from calling on that name. And when they said, hey, hey, shh, stop it, he started to cry out even greater, Jesus, thou son of David, his miracle was passing by. This was his only chance. He had to do something. And he started to implore with his voice the same way he used to beg and implore people to give. Now he knew there was a greater, there was a greater one passing by. And he started calling on the name of Jesus. And they, shh, they'll try to silence that name. They'll talk about everything else, but when you start to talk about Jesus, it makes folks uncomfortable. Because he watches over his word. His word and his name are the same, and that's why they get uncomfortable. Oh, things are going to start changing in Los Angeles. Things are going to start changing in Sacramento. Oh, they they can implore certain things, but it's just for a moment until Jesus takes his place. And he starts to pull down every lie. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And he starts to actually, you know, in the Old t- in, the, in the New Testament, in Acts, it says when Ananias and Sapphira, they sold a piece of property. 
And the church was bringing what they had, the first church, to the apostles' feet and laying it down. But they sold a piece of property and held back part of the proceeds. And Peter asked Ananias, did you sell the property for so much? He said, yeah, I, I sold it for so much. And Peter's response was, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? Or in essence, why have you lied to the spirit of truth? I mean, that's how pure where they were actually walking at that time. First church, just the beginning. He fell down in the church dead. That's hard to explain. The men wound him up, and his wife came so long after, same day. They asked her, Sapphira, I, I want to ask you a question. Be honest, be truthful, don't lie. Did you sell the property for so much? You know the answer. She said, yeah, for so much. And she fell down, and the same people that wound her husband up bound her up. Why, 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 why are you touching on this, Wes? Because a lie is never going to outcome the truth. And the Bible says whatever in darkness will come to the light. And whatever in darkness is going to come to the housetop and they're all going to see it. Oh, listen to me. In the first church, the hand of God dropped mightily on that, on that day. And it was a scary place that people said, wait a minute. Before you uh, join yourself to the church, consider... Consider. <laughs> and there's people in high places saying and doing all kinds of stuff. And thinking that it's okay. Huh. He started to cry out even louder. And they told him, hey, wait a minute. You know, keep it down. Don't say anything more. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more. Bartimaeus called to Jesus. He heard that Christ, uh, they got that big thing there, it says time, that's it. I love that. Bartimaeus called to Jesus, and he, uh, 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 to the Christ, uh, uh, they're throwing me off, being blind. <laughs> Those guys are too much back there, man. Hey. Hey, Mike, we'll take them all to Denny's, huh? <laughs> Mike, they'll throw you off like right in the middle, like just someone jumping. And he threw off everything he had, and he went forth, and Jesus said, what can I do for you? It's no different. What I'm saying in the whole story, it's the same story as the four guys. They pressed in. They were determined. It was the same story in Bartimaeus. He pressed in when everybody said no. He said, but this is it. I have no other choice. Jesus, and Jesus, by him calling unto the Lord, you can stop him right there. He stopped in his ministry and where he was going and said, wait a minute, who called me? They said, well, it's the blind man. He waited on him, blind. He's not moving fast to come. And he says, what can I do for you? He said, Jesus, but that I could see. And he said, is that all you want? Is that all you want? Is that all you need? Okay, be it unto you according to your faith. The same thing happened to the lady with the issue of blood. Exact same thing. She pressed in. She had a sentence of death in herself for 12 years. She was supposed to, when she got near a crowd, saying, I'm unholy, I'm unholy. It was against the Levitical law for her to have an issue of blood and to press in a crowd where people was. She could be stoned and died, but she didn't care. And the reason why she didn't care, she had went to all the physicians, spent everything she got. She didn't get any better, and she had the sentence of death in herself. She was dying. So what? So what did she do? She took a chance, and she said, you know what? I heard that he's a healer, and you know what? It started within her. If you read that thing and go back in Mark, it started within her. She said, she said, if I if 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 I but just touch his garment, if I but just touch, if I but just determine to press in, if I but just gonna stand for my family, if I but just gonna stand for my church, she determined with herself and she pressed in, and you know the story. She was made whole of everything she had. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yeah, let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> sit down. You may be sit down. Two powerful messages by two powerful men of God. Amen. Good news is that one of these, hey, Yvonne. <laughs> Good news is that uh, Pastor West is going up with us to Sanger in a couple of weeks. So he's going to be there. So we got to get Pastor Mike next year up to Sanger, you know. You, 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 I'm sorry, it's too late now. <laughs> but praise God. But you know what? Um, I wasn't going to have an altar call, but the messages that they said about throw my shoe up there <laughs> when, <laughs> when they're talking about But I'm going to have you back. There's a song that they wrote, Joshua wrote. And uh, Pastor Mike, and I, I, I know you, I going to ask you and West Pastor West if you can minister to the people that will come up. And so I'm going to ask if you want prayer, it's going to start on one side and Pastor West on the other side and meet in the middle somewhere. But if you want prayer for whatever they shared, I need you to come up now and line up. So if no one's moving, so if you want prayer, well, I don't know. Then throw your shoe out there. Okay. They're coming. Start in the middle over here. Who's hungry for the Lord? Who's hungry to want revival? See, Acts chapter 2 is not over. The sound of a mighty rushing wind is coming. Tongues of fire are still coming. And, uh, line up and listen to this song as Josh sings it. Pastor Mike and, and Pastor West would just come up and go ahead and, and just start ministering to them. Come closer. Those that aren't up there, just pray. Just believe for these people. Jesus, you sacrifice to set me free, Jesus. 
Just a couple of quick things. Is that uh, Sister Mabel? Got it right. <laughs> the Mabel. She has some products out there. To be, uh, so this song, it's on one of the uh, CDs out there. They have several. The Lion Tribe of Judah is on there. So there's a table of buying the CDs. And uh, let's go out there. They'll be there. And my wife is selling uh, anointing oil if you'd like some. So, Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that we are not the same. But there's a change. And we're throwing our shoe in because we're going to go in and meet Jesus. We thank you that this church, Turning Point Fellowship, the roof has been ripped open so that the glory of God could come down and bring healing and restoration to his people. I bless you. Let the glory of God shine upon you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, don't forget, men, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock.